Let me check if the audio works. Oh yeah.
Hello. <laughs> Hi, can you guys hear me okay? Is the audio working? Um, if you're new to YouTube Live, which I am, there is a chat box, I think it's on the right. So if you look, guys let me know if you can hear me. I see lots of familiar names. But yeah, we haven't started yet. We're going to start in like seven minutes. Hello, Mark. Hey, Angela. How are you doing? Lots of people here from all over the world, which is cool. Okay, I'm going to take the yups as yup, you can hear me, hopefully. <coughs> awesome. Thank you, an artist's journey. This is so cool. It's also ter absolutely terrifying to be live. So, the one thing I like about making YouTube videos is if I say something stupid, I can edit it out. Hey Ira, how are you doing? Hi Don. Hi Yu Chen. Chris Stone. Tina. Hey David. This is really cool. So you guys can see. The only thing is like, I wanted to make sure you guys had the ref, because you guys are going to be drawing, right? So I wanted to make sure the reference was nice and big on the screen. But it means that there's, you might not be able to see my whole drawing thing, but that doesn't matter because it's not really about me drawing, it's more about you drawing anyway. Hi Maria. Hey Volodya. I feel like there's a, it's a tiny bit of lag on it. So what I do, there's like a few seconds between that and I've never done um, live before, so. Hi Neil, how's it going? Hey Joseph. This is amazing. So I'm, I'm guessing everyone's on lockdown pretty much. I mean, the whole world seems to be on lockdown. We've been on um, self-isolation here for a while because my daughter had a fever. But, you know, toddlers get bugs and stuff all the time, so it wasn't a big deal, but obviously we had to go into self-isolation, so... We've basically been here for like 10 days so far. But for me, I hardly notice the difference because I just work from home anyway and don't really go anywhere. <laughs> so there's Darren and Eva and is it Johanna or Johanna? Laurent, hello confined ones. Yeah, that's pretty much all of us, eh? We're lucky that our hobby is drawing because it's the perfect lockdown uh, hobby to have. Hi, Danuta. So many uh, familiar names, so cool. So I hope you guys all have your drawing supplies ready, yeah? Lockdown's no difference for me, yeah. Although having said that, I can't wait for, you know, to get out there and do more things, but it's actually been, been okay so far. Thank God for the internet. We've had to come up a lot of, with a lot of creative stuff for our daughter, like imaginary tea parties and things. Oh wow, Cambodia. Canada, Edinburgh. Hi Frank, hi Bernd. Wow, okay. What kind of materials are you guys using? I'm gonna be using one of these.
as long as the Wi-Fi is there on, still there on the far end. Yeah, exactly. Hi, Julie. Antronic. Well, this is really fun already. I'm definitely going to do this again, I think. <laughs> Conti Pencil 5B, nice soft one, iPad, that's cool. My mum Mako got, um, oh I should, do you mind texting her and making sure she's, uh, oh you can't, okay, how can I do that? Um, I can't do it on there. Okay, yeah. She just got a new iPad. So she's figuring it out. iPad, Photoshop and Cintiq. Newsprint and charcoal pencil. Yeah, it's a lo lovely combo. Graphite pencil. Oh, Pascal, cool. Crayon at the ready. Pit Pascal or Pit Charcoal. You know, everyone's been stockpiling um, Everyone's been stockpiling toilet paper, and I realized I should have been stockpiling pencils and sketchbooks because I, I ran out and I had to do a big order. Lots of pit pastel pencils. Oh, hey, Andy. Agatha. This is so cool. Maybe we'll just wait like one more minute for anyone else to come join, and then we'll just go for it. I picked out some poses today and because it's on YouTube we've got to steer clear of nudity but hopefully I found ones where you can still see the figure and also they have to be copyright free so Holland and Scotland hey Guru yeah A4 is okay Especially if you, you know, fill it up. Hi, John Baptiste. Wolf's Carbon, a nice pencil. Roll of lining paper from B&Q, wow. Is a good turnout. Just broke my pencil. Oh, that's so frustrating. Have you got spares? No, no, not me. Someone in the chat. Oh, do I have spares? Yeah, I've got a couple. Two spares. That's quite optimistic that I'll only need two spares. All right. So, are you guys all ready to start drawing? You've all got. You've all got your stuff ready? Because I reckon we can just get cracking, right? If someone comes a bit later, they can just join in wherever we are. Hey, Sylvie. Bad sharpener. Hey Julie, how's it going? You were literally saying when someone's like, it's an open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how would you like to come and do this? Yeah, you can hear my wife in the background chatting. Okay. All set. Awesome. Hey Talita, how you doing? So, now you can only see me over here on this side of the screen. But the way I thought we could warm up is with some spirals. I really like this warm up. So the first kind of spiral 
is just a triangular spiral. So you've got to go start off small and then, you know, try and keep them fairly tight, but you know, and you make a kind of spiral of lines in a triangular shape. And, you know, it's cool because you get quite a lot of lines done without taking up too much of your paper. And then you can do another one, rectangular or maybe square. And you just want to get your arm moving and making marks on the paper. And you know what, the truth is, you know, we're going to warm up for like five or ten, uh, ten minutes. But um, usually it takes me like an hour to really warm up. So we'll probably be warmed up by the end of this. But anyway, you can just keep drawing after we've done this anyway. Uh, yeah, it's unlisted because I'll tell you why it's unlisted. Because I don't want to open up, up, maybe I'll open up the next one to all of YouTube. But I need someone then to be moderating the comments because I trust all of you guys. But if it's open to the whole of YouTube, you start to get crazy people. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're not we're not starting on this post just yet. Um, we're just going to do some warm ups and then it's going to be 10 minutes for each pose. But I'll explain later. There's going to be a few things that I'm going to try and do with each pose. Yeah, my wife's here, Lucy. <laughs> okay, so a couple of spirals, and then you can do a circular spiral too. Doesn't want to know how long the pose is for. So it's going to be for 10 minutes, but we haven't started the pose yet. Probably shouldn't have had it up there. Hello, Olivia. Yeah, that's a good idea. You can go to Crocky Cafe on Vimeo after the stream. And another one you can do is just vary the strength on each side of your spiral. And just get used to, you know, making marks of different strengths as you go. You just want to get your arm moving. It doesn't really matter what we're doing. As long as we're making marks and moving our arm. No automatic subtitles. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if they do that for live. Video not that loud. Okay, I'll try and move. Is that better? I'm, I'm not talking super duper loud because my daughter's asleep in the next room and I'm praying she keeps sleeping for a little bit longer. Okay. Cool. So we've got our spirals warm up. And then if you've done that one, if you want to do a different one, another good one is if you just make like two marks on your paper and then you just try and make some lines that link them together. You know, you're kind of getting your eye in and, and getting your arm moving and you can do curved ones that try and pass through and you could do like fat wider marks and thin marks and just try and get your arm moving making different types of marks okay cool that's better awesome okay excellent sound All right, guys, so once you feel like you're ready to warm up, well, actually, it can't be whenever you want because it's live, so you have to do it at the same time. So we're going to do each pose. That You can see the first pose up on the screen. And you can do, you know, you can draw that however you like. You know, you can just draw it for 10 minutes if you want. Just draw it once. What I'm going to try and do is we're going to try and draw it three different ways in that 10 minutes. The first one would just be like, a quick sketch of it um, and then the second one will be drawing it with just straight lines only and you know when you do it with just straight lines you can use as many straight lines as you like but you don't want to do like a million straight lines because then that's basically just a curve right so you want to try and cut through 
some information and cut through with nice big straight lines where you can. And then the last one's going to be to try and draw it in 20 lines. And those don't have to just be straight, they can be C curves and S curves and straight lines. But those are going to be the three ways that we try and draw each pose. So it'll be a quick sketch, all straight lines, and then 20 lines. So the reason for that is what I thought we could think about today is how much can we simplify what we're drawing. And straight lines is one way to do that because you can't get all, um, you know, you can't get too sort of particular about beautiful curves and stuff. You're just going to cut through with straight lines and just basically get the angles and the directions. And then with 20 lines, you're going to have to find gestural curves that go through parts of the figure because you can't draw them each individually because you don't have enough lines for that. So it's kind of like the 12 line exercise that you might have seen before, but I've given us eight extra lines, partly because all these models are closed, which means there's a little bit more to draw. Hey Sue, how you doing? No worries. Okay. So I'm going to, if you guys are all good to go, all feeling warmed up, maybe let me know in the chat if you're all ready to go on the first pose for 10 minutes. Oh, right, there's a lag here. Oh, you can hear Maggie growling in the background. Okay, nice. Okay, I'm going to start the first 10 minutes. So like I said, if you just want to draw the pose for 10 minutes, go for it. You could share it in the community area on our website if you like. Um, but if you want to join me trying to do, do this thing three different ways, we're going to start off trying to draw it just as a quick sketch. And then we're going to try and do it um, just straight lines. And then we're going to try and do it in 20 lines. OK. All right, guys. Good luck. So you know, the one thing that I really notice about this guy with this pose, obviously, he's jumping in the air, right? Which is really cool. But look at how his butt is facing us. And by the time we get to the shoulders, we're looking at them from side on. So there's a lot of spiral there down his spine. And look at that shape on the far side of his torso on his back. You know, it tapers off to nothing. And then it kind of expands there. So that's going to be something that we want to bring out is the twist. The twist is one of the best things, I think, in that pose. So. Oh, my phone's going to die. Would you mind doing me a favor and bringing me the long cable? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, I'm doing all of this through my phone, so if it dies, it's a disaster. Okay, so we got that tw we got that kind of nice S curve down the spine, and then that far side of the torso tapers off to nothing as it gets towards the top, and then that, by the time we get down to his butt, we can see quite a lot of it which is one of the nice things about that pose, I think. And by the way, guys, you know, we've got 10 minutes and you can do as many attempts as you like. So if things go wrong, just start again. Just go for it again. It's totally fine. Same thing with the straight line version and the 20 line version. We're going to have as many goes as we want, but then by the time we get to 10 minutes, just move on, regardless of what happened in the drawing. Do you guys remember in February we talked about that um, little bit of a bulge? Yeah. Is that plug in? Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's trying. A little bit of a bulge above the above your pelvis. It's like the love handle there, but there's also that flank part of the external oblique, and you can see it here on this guy. Oh right. Oh, no. oh it's because of this. Okay. 
okay if I Yeah, Is it gone now? it's gone now. So I can't Sorry. use this mic. Okay. Um, sorry, guys. I knew something would happen technically, but that's quite minor. Sorry about that noise. So that was from the mic being in and then the phone charging. I guess the power. Oh, it's, the mic's good. Is the mic good, yeah? yeah. Okay, cool. So when you get up to that hand up there, it's kind of like a box, eh, this hand that's coming towards us. One, one of the great things about hands is they often, even though it's quite complicated, right? Like, you know, you've got all these fingers, which makes it super complicated, but they often merge into shapes like that's one plane and that's one plane there, you know? And if it's like that, well, that's still a plane. And it's very rare that they're all, you know, completely... Um, separate or whatever or random they're almost always creating bigger shapes and so when you have a hand when it's like this you can look for these planes and even when the fingers are separated you can look for the lines through the knuckles and they create bigger shapes simpler shapes for you okay so back to drawing this guy one thing about this guy as well which is cool because he's got this hoodie on he's got natural cross contour lines going around his arm right so I don't know if you guys remember in figuary it was like when an because his arm's foreshortened and when an arm's foreshortened what one thing that's useful is to find cross contour lines to help make sense of the volume right and he's got those you know actually this combines two tutorials from figuary because He's got those spiral folds going around his sleeve, which is all bunched up, which we did in week four of February. And those spiral folds are like cross contour lines, oops, explaining the foreshortened volume. So that's really cool. Not something I even noticed when I picked this reference. Um, he's also got his toes really pointed, so they really flow with the bigger gestural curve, like. And try and bring this up. So you've got that line running all the way down on both sides, from his shin all the way to his toe. So this guy's really helping us out with this pose, which is quite cool. Um, okay. How are you guys all doing? You say the sound is bigger now than it was with the mic. Oh, right. <laughs> Um, hey Neil, I can't believe you're so positive about drawing hands. They are a mare. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think if, what, I'll tell you all the tricks to drawing hands and then you'll love them, I think. Just learned what foreshortening is. Awesome. Okay, so I'm going to try and move on to a straight line version. I feel like I've been... saying so many random things that I haven't left myself enough time to show the straight line uh, version I want to do. But okay, let's go for it. We'll do it quick. So, once again, the main thing is the twist so that we've got this shape here kind of expanding because it's twisting. And then by the time we get to his butt, we can see, you know, quite a lot of it. And do a straight line all the way from his knee to his toe because of the nice way that he's pointing his toes for us. So this is all I mean by straight lines. I, hope I'm, I haven't got any curves in there, right? I haven't cheated, hopefully. i bring it down for the knee and then go. So just straight lines only. And I love this exercise. I don't really do it enough because it makes you realize that you don't, how much stuff you can just cut through and still capture what you're looking at. 
all you really need is the general direction of things. That's all you really get with straight lines. You know, we're not talking about crazy, beautiful, you know, swooping gestural curves here. We're just using straight lines and trying to capture the whole pose. And I'm sure that I could do this, or someone could do this with way fewer straight lines and still capture the essence of the pose anyway. So, how's everybody doing? Everyone's busy drawing, eh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put down some like. I'm gonna count that like fat fat marks like that as straight lines too. So we'll do some of those as well, and just see how that works, and see like okay, we're not doing like tons of nuanced shading or anything. Just using some like really clunky, crude straight lines, and then still can have a lot of fun just with that. I think I brought the spine down too much, eh? Like trying to show off that twist. Because I love that twist in his, down his spine and how you can see a little bit of that far side. That's the coolest thing about this pose. Okay. Okay, wow, we've got one minute left on this pose, guys. Uh, so I need to do the 20 line version of this in one minute. Do you know what? I'm going to just give us all extra time. I'm sure you don't mind. <laughs> Maybe one extra minute. Okay, so I'm going to try and do it in 20 lines. So what, what are we going to do here? There's two, three, four, five. Okay, this, I should stop counting. You know, I'm just going to do it and then count it at the end and see if I made it. So you can use any kind of CSI type lines. And also, you know, CSI, I'm going to, and then uh, an angle change type line like that, like a kind of L shape. Just kind of making up the rules as I go along. <laughs> uh... I might, I might go over. Oh well, we'll see if we make it on the next one. How many have I got? So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, I've got, I can do loads more. Okay. I wonder if this isn't enough time, eh? Ten minutes to do three different versions of this pose. What do you guys think? Should we have more time or maybe just try and do like one version of each drawing? Let me know in the comments. The chat bar is covering the photo. If that's the case, they can out and move it around the screen. Oh right, you can move it around apparently. You hit the three dots and then there's pop out chat and that makes it a separate window. Maybe 15 minutes per pose. It's wild and crazy but great. Yeah, it's fun, right? A little bit more. Any tips for shading the muscles on the chest and neck? All right, how about we go 12 minutes per pose? So then we get like four minutes to do each version. You guys cool with that? Uh oh, there's the baby. <laughs> okay, so this is the part with the technology that I've been nervous about, which is switching poses. So let's see if this works. Okay. Okay, has that worked? Don't worry Don if you went over 20, it really doesn't matter. The point is that you're trying to keep it minimal, so you're trying to find some bigger lines. 
Okay, I think that's worked. Wow. We switched reference photos. That was the part I was most worried about, guys. Cool. 12 minutes, four minutes or so for per drawing, roughly speaking. Okay. Okay, should we start on the next one? Um. Okay, so for this lady, I feel like the risk, if I'm just looking at it now, I mean, we had a BT baby monitor. How? <laughs> you guys knew we had a BT ba baby monitor. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> the risk with this one is to elongate the torso, right? Because she's got, she's basically got like her rib cage here. And then we're going to be, and then, you know, we want her butt to be far away from her rib cage, you know, because that's kind of what we expect. Um, so, just be wary of extending that too much, right? So you just want to kind of pay, maybe pay attention to that negative space, you know, that shape between her butt and her torso, so that you don't overextend, make the midsection too too long. Because I feel like that's that could be a big thing with this pose. Um, and it's one of those things where, like, even though I've just said that, I might actually end up doing it anyway. It's just weird how you kn you know about some issues and then you just do it anyway. It's like when I was learning to ride a bike, which I actually did at the age of 18 for whatever reason, um, I would be like, okay, don't, don't ride into that lamppost. And then sure enough, you know what I mean? That's exactly what I would do. I would just wiggle and wobble right into the lamppost and I feel like it with drawing I used to be like okay look I know that I draw eyes too high up on the head so do not do that and then I'm like but wait I don't want to over compensate for that so I won't draw them too low and then I'd overthink it and then you know I'd draw the eyes too high up on the head so even though you know about stuff that you do it takes all this time and effort to like figure out um, how to actually stop yourself doing it. It's not enough just to know that you do it. Like, oh, I straighten out the pose. I elongate the pose. It's weird, but just knowing that's like 5% of the battle, knowing what you're supposed to do, or me even less than 5% of the battle. Okay, this is a really nice pose actually. You know, one thing about all of these poses, when I looked for ones that are, you know, clothed and freely available, like copyright free, they're all kind of, I had to look for, you know, like athletes and stuff. And so they're all kind of athletic people, not quite the mix of like, norm, not normal, but not quite the mix of body types I would normally choose, but that's okay. Okay, yeah, what a nice pose. Really fun to draw. Okay. So you guys, hopefully, notice. She's got a nice, you know, it's pretty subtle on her, but like the nice S curve going all the way down that front, that leg. And then um, the way that her chest muscle, like pectoral muscle kind of merges as a shape with her deltoid on the shoulder, on both sides. I think that's really cool. Okay, and then you can see her rib cage here. And just, you know, you don't wanna like straighten it out. So look at that torso center line, the belly button. It's pretty close to the edge, whoops. Pretty close to the edge there. So we can't see that much of the far side as it gets towards the crotch. But then because she's twisting back, we can see quite a lot of the far side once we get up to the shoulders. So there's a real good twist there. Okay, how are we doing? Should we go for a straight line attempt? This is such a curvy pose, I wonder how we'll be able to turn it into some straight lines. Kind of starting, starting to feel like we're warming up a little bit. So there's definitely a straight line down the left side of her rib cage there. 
Okay, it's just straight lines. It's going to be really important to remember that because I'm just going to start drawing curves and completely forget what I'm doing. Okay. Okay, are these all straight lines? Those are all straight lines. Okay. There's that um, sternocleidomastoid vertical, really, really useful. We made a video about it for figure eight. That's a curve, that's cheating. And uh, in this pose, it's, it's like an anchor for the whole thing. Straight lines. Okay. Just want to check in on the chat, see if everyone's doing okay. I'm guessing most of you are concentrating on your drawing. But maybe we can take a little break after this one and see how you guys are all doing and have see if there's any questions. Okay. I want to bring it back a little bit for the knee. You know the leg... When you look at someone's leg from the side, hers is pretty straight, but generally, you know, it's going to come back a little bit for the knee and then continue for the shin like that. And then a triangle, you know, when you're drawing someone's foot, you come down to an angle, you can bring that heel, the line for the heel back, you know, because it's not like a foot just comes like straight, straight down from the angle. You can think of it as coming back and becoming a triangle like that around the ankle. Okay, straight line version. I might try and add some of those fat straight lines for a little bit of tone and see if that is cool or not. Okay, awesome. This one is a mess. <laughs> Don't worry, Merv. Making a mess is half the fun, right? Andy's paranoid that that's your... <laughs> yeah. It's like when, when she's napping and you get that noise, you're like... Ugh. I wanted her to nap a little bit longer than that. Uh-oh, you saw a curve? I see a few curves, actually, Sandra. I'm just totally cheating. Okay. Joanne, you prefer one version? That's totally fine. Totally fine just to do it one way. Okay, what site did you use? Is that for finding these? I use a site called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S, because it's all copyright free. It's a pretty good resource for photos, but they're all quite glossy, you know. They've all been done in Photoshop and stuff. Um... Where's Larry? Yeah, I think me and Larry have been talking about a live with Crocky Cafe, especially for next year's figuary. Okay, I've got to do the 20 line version or attempt it. I might need a few attempts at that, right? Okay. Still working? All right, cool. Let's try a 20 line version. So maybe just go for a big curve all the way down here. And then a straight line here and a curve here. It's like the rough. Core of this whole pose. OK, one for there and one for there. So when we're doing these 20 line versions, try and get the clothing in too, because that's kind of one of the reasons I upped it from 12, is so that we can get a little bit of the clothes in as well. Also, I sometimes I feel like 12, it pushes you a little, <coughs> a 
a little bit too far away from what you would normally draw. <coughs> Whereas with 20, we can just kind of draw almost like we would normally draw, but a bit simpler. Sorry guys, got a little bit of a cold. I don't think it's the, the virus. I think it's just a virus, but you know, okay. Okay, that's not really one line, is it? But Okay. Okay. So how many lines? I don't, I don't even know. If, how many lines is that? Does a circle count as one line? Yes, Olivia. I think a circle counts as one line because it's like a C that's gone all the way around. Where are we posting our pictures? Uh, you could post them in the community area. I don't think I'll have time to look at them during this live, but I'll definitely look at them after. My 20 lines have been a disaster so far. Don't worry, don't worry Andy, that's totally fine. Um, it takes a little while to get used to. Talita, it's nice to uh, go back to drawing quick poses. Yeah, it's very nice. Oh no, Lily, yeah, that's our toddler. <laughs> Straight lines are great. Joseph, you've ordered more newsprint. That's great. That's what we all need. You know, if you run out of toilet paper, it doesn't really matter. But if you run out of newsprint... Okay. Ran out of the page for 20 line version. That's cool, because that means you're using big lines. So I'm just going to count these, and then we'll move on to the next one. So I got, I'm going to count that as one, even though that's cheating. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, oh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Is that all of them? A twenty. I think I went over by one. 21. Damn it! Alright, doesn't matter. Okay, next one. Forever 21. Okay. You know what, if you go over, I mean... Okay, how do I... Oh yeah. If you go over, it doesn't matter. The point is to make that effort to simplify, right? Okay. And then that one. This is the next pose. Is that working? Is that showing up? Let's have a look. Yes. Okay. Cheryl, yeah, you do. If you want to just do 10 minute drawings and stuff while we do all these. Um, yeah, that was 12 minutes, an artist's journey. Yeah, if you want to just do one drawing, that's totally fine. What consists of line, U10? It has to be C, S, I. And I'm adding an L, like an angle on it. You might hear Maggie very upset in the background. Um, she's actually been great on lockdown. We, we're allowed to take her out for a little bit of exercise, but um, she's, been, she's been, a, been a good girl. Okay, so if you guys are all good, I'm going to start the clock on this one. He's got no legs. Oh, you mean in the reference? Yeah, but you know what the cool thing about these trousers is it kind of smooths out the legs to create gestural curves naturally. So that's quite cool. Okay. Everyone good? Let's go for it. I think this is a pretty tricky one, right? Because it's really unusual, foreshortened torso. So it's going to be a, a little bit of a tricky one, but let's, we'll just do our best with it, right? It's a very cool pose anyway. You know, one thing that um, is like interesting to note on this pose, I think, is that 
his arm is on a little bit of an angle. Do you know, I think I probably should have started by like a big rib cage shape and a big pelvis shape because it's kind of hard to figure out what, you know, he's got this big fold in the torso, but we can't see it from the front to really gauge what's going on with it. Um, but anyway, started now. So what I was saying about, let me show you. So all this, a lot of weight is on this arm. So it's not a straight arm, like vertical. It's on a bit of an angle. And you notice like that's important, right? For the, um, to kind of make sense of the physics of what he's doing. And then another thing about his forearm, do you notice it's not straight as well? It's got a curve on it. It's curving a little bit like that. And that's a really nice thing about arms is the way they curve, especially forearms. So when you draw it, you can bring that out, right? You can bring out that curve and exaggerate it a little bit. Maybe that's too much, but you know. <laughs> okay. So this one is just trying to do a quick sketch and then we'll move on to a straight line attempt at this guy. Yeah, I got a little bit of a cold probably from my daughter, but you know, these days when you get a cold, I was talking about the angle on the arm and then completely didn't do it myself, but you know, you get a cold these days and it's like, oh man, is this the cold? But I've had like been sneezing and stuff, so I don't think that's really part of it. Okay. I feel like I'm kind of getting lost in this drawing, but it doesn't matter. It happens all the time. And it's all practice, isn't it? Okay. You know what? I feel like this these legs they can just kind of be one massive curve because of his trousers like that it's crazy windy here okay so what would he what is he do he's like I've, I've not watched that much gymnastics but he's like swinging his legs up right so it's kind of like it's kind of moving that way is that right or is he swinging them over anyway I think it's good to know what you're looking at I probably need to watch more gymnastics to really understand okay Hey Maggie. Maggie. Okay. Yeah, come here. Lucy, would you mind calling Maggie? Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go on and try a straight line effort with this one. Sorry guys, we've got toddlers and dogs here. Not the most professional, but that is the self-isolation life. I hope you don't mind. Okay, straight lines only. This one, those aren't straight. I can't resist getting that curve into those forearms because it's like the thing that I love most about forearms. Uh, those are curves. I have to use two lines there. Let Maggie try the straight lines. <laughs> We like kids and dogs. Well, that's good. Oh, you've got a dog called Lissy. 
Yeah, it's either either people are worried that they can hear their own toddler, or they're worried they can hear their own dog. Or we got a crazy household here. Can you believe I make all those figurary videos in the midst of this? I just gotta wait till everyone's sleeping. Nap time. Okay. Okay, have I used any curves here? But so the idea is like, you know, we're trying to move a little bit away from always worrying about copying exactly what we're seeing to seeing some truths that are a little bit behind what we're seeing. And then, so for me, straight lines was really useful to that because you're forced to be like, well, the curvature doesn't matter. It's just the angle. It's just the direction that really matters. And then something that I noticed is like, when I look at like a lot of great artists, how many straight lines they're using. And that really sets off their curves and makes their curves more, you know, more curvy, like more interesting. If the whole thing is curves, it's not quite as, they're not quite as powerful as when they're set off against straight lines. Oh wow, two, is that, is GSD, does that mean German Shepherd? Three Jack Russells. Okay, let's do a 20 line attempt at this one. I can't even imagine how to, but I guess, you know, one cool thing is that his legs, that's gonna be one. So we're gonna get a lot done. It's okay, it's okay. We're gonna get a lot done with just one line there. So that's two. Later on, I'll see if I can turn the camera around and say hi to all you guys. Oops, I wasted one there, a tiny little line. It's okay feels important you know at the end of the day it doesn't actually matter right what matters is you're trying to find simpler things bigger simpler lines to capture more and it's just a good exercise okay this is way too many lines but it doesn't matter let's just use a couple for the legs hmm the one thing is like his arm is behind, his leg is behind his arm, so I gotta use one for above and then one for below, which is a shame. Okay. Oops. So how how's that? Okay, so we got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Again, twenty-one. Oh, twenty-two. Oh, total failure. But anyway, that was fun. Joseph, I'm struggling deciding how much I should be looking at the model versus looking at your drawing. Definitely look at the model. I was almost not actually going to have myself drawing on this, but then I realized that that's not really a live thing. That's just, that's just showing a reference photo. <laughs> um, so what the goal is to, is for you guys to draw. And that means observing the model. Don't really worry about what I'm doing too much. Um, and he says, start using straight lines. Yes, yeah, straight lines is awesome. Um, I love straight lines. Yeah, toddlers and dogs are more natural. That was very forgiving of you guys. Thank you. 22, you forgot the shoulder. Yeah, and there's a line here that you can't see for the foot, so 23.
Yeah, do you know what? Command Z to undo. One thing that I've noticed is I'll like, if you use Procreate too long, you know, you can, you can use two finger tap to undo. And I'm just drawing with a pencil and trying to, I'm like, I want to undo that line. 18 lines. Oh, nice one, Fady. Twenty-three, nice one, Sally. That's good. If you can capture, imagine you can capture a whole pose with twenty-three lines. I mean, that's pretty cool. It makes you think, right, about when you're norm drawing normally. Okay, so we've got another like twenty seconds on this one, guys. The background noise is part of the aesthetic. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. That's very kind. Yeah, so you don't need to look too much at my drawing versus the reference. The reference is really, that's Thomas with 17, that's really good. Maria, 19, good simplifying. You try and zoom in, <laughs> yeah, you try and zoom in on your paper drawings. Okay, guys, we're time up on that one. Let's do another one. Sorry about the sniffles. Okay. Um. Okay. Now this one, this is a hard one. Why did I choose this? How long are we going for, Kenzo? Um, well, it's gonna be till four. But I feel like we could go a little bit longer if you guys are okay with that. Do a little bit more drawing. Um, but yeah, this this pose, you know, it's, it's kind of a dynamic pose, right? Because she's leaping in the air very athletically. But really her torso is pretty straight and her head pretty straight on with her torso. And then we're looking up at her head, which is tough. And then we've got a foreshortened leg. So it's a pretty tricky one. Um, but let's just try it anyway and do our best. Okay, I'm going to start the time. Let's go for it. Okay. So I've got a fairly straight on torso. Useful pants for figuring out what's going on. Okay. One thing that I think could easily happen here, which maybe I'm gonna end up doing by mistake as well, is putting, is bringing the head up too high. So, I feel like I got a reasonable sense of the kinds of pitfalls each pose presents because I look at so many people's drawings all the time. I feel like that could be one that the head might float up high, so maybe watch out for that. Okay, I'm definitely feeling too tentative. Like, I think I need to relax with this pose a little bit. You know, sometimes you see a pose, you're like, oh my God, that looks hard. And then you, be, and then it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy because you, it's the being tensed up is, makes everything much harder. It's got to relax a little bit. Foreshortened leg. Use some cross contour lines maybe to try and figure it out. Okay, got that, do you know what, a little bit of an outward curve on a forearm, I'm going to bring that out because that's such a cool thing about forearms. And actually, you know what, it happens in the upper arm too. Like the upper arm is a little bit cur curved outwards and the forearm a little bit curved outwards. It's like often you just find, 
you know, if it's just straight, there's not that much gestural feeling there. Um, on an arm, at least. So if you can find a little bit of that outward curve, it's awesome. Okay, so one thing about this one is it would be nice to bring out the lighting a little bit because she's lit up dramatically by that window. But then it's really just like that rim light, like a little bit of light on the edges of her. So we would need to kind of shade an awful lot of her, right, to bring that out. So maybe just leave it, eh? Maybe just go for it. Okay, I don't know. Anyway. It's actually a quite a cool pose. Well, I'm gonna go for a straight line attempt. Um Maybe just straight across the shoulders. And then like, it's too thin, isn't it? Bring out a little bit more width. The one cool thing about drawing from photos is you can get, you can draw people while they're leaping in the air and stuff. It really changes the whole balance and weight of the pose, obviously. Okay, I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to be doing this in 20 lines. Okay, so, oh no, don't want to waste one on that. Okay, trapezius. Bring one down for a big S-curve for her leg. Once you're majorly simplifying, often the legs are just massive S-curves, which is quite fun. Okay, how many have I done here? So I want to get the clothes in. Okay, two for the hair, I think they deserve that. Is that too many? Quite possibly. Let's have a look. We got one, two, sorry, this isn't the most riveting live stream, it's just me counting. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. It's not looking good. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay. How did you guys do? Did I? Oh, did I not do a straight line one? Did I? It's true, I've hardly, hardly any time has gone. Oh yeah, I didn't do it. Okay, sorry. I'm losing my marbles. Right. Straight, sorry guys. Straight line version. This feels like one for abstract shapes. Yeah, good thinking, Neil. Still on the straight line one. Yeah, I didn't do the straight line one. Okay, I'm gonna have a go at it now. Right, so straight line. Oops, I want to taper that off. All you need to, like, one of the cool things is, when you, when, when, one, of the, one of the things you realize with straight lines is, what, all that you need is the character of the thing, you, ooh, that's a curve. The basic direction, the angle, and then the character. So like here, this is not like some great curve for a calf, but at least it's tapering off. 
it's going from here to here, it's tapering off. And that tells you, that's a, that's a, a lot of character of what, you know, of what a calf is. It kind of, it kind of ha it goes thick and then it tapers off. That's not a lot of information, but sometimes that's all you need. And sometimes when you get into like details and stuff, you, you kind of, get drawn into stuff and then forget about this basic character of what the, what you're drawing which is just that it tapers off and then the tapering gets lost because of focus on some less important detail or characteristic so when you when you've only got straight lines you just think all right what i can't really like capture too much nuance but what can i capture i can get the general direction and i can get the general character like it tapers off or whatever So, we should definitely do a video about the straight line exercise, eh? For the people on YouTube who want to see. This current live stream is only for people on the newsletter. And I'm going to open it up to everyone on YouTube <laughs> once I can get a, someone to moderate the comments. Because you know, 99% of the comments that we get on our videos on YouTube are fantastic. And not, a, you know, YouTube has a bad rep for its comments. Uh, but we haven't found that, maybe because we're not such a massive channel. But when a video takes off and kind of goes beyond our normal subscribers, that's when you start to get some bad comments and I, I don't really care like I'm I'm not too too easily offended but yeah I, I, I've deleted a lot of crazy stuff <laughs> a lot of crazy stuff I really don't like it when people start to talk about talk badly about the models for example okay straight line version Twenty three lines. That's pretty good. Strong foundations, yeah. Twenty lines, so you're doing great. Half Mary <laughs> halfway through and eighteen lines. That is actually not bad at all though. I mean look, normally you'd use way more than that for a drawing, right? So even at like what's that, thirty six lines? You really gotta push yourself to get just down, you know, you're pushing your simplifications, even with 36 lines, I would say. Um, all right. So how's everybody doing? Twenty four lines, twenty one lines, Kim. Talita, to have a hard line with the 20 line ones. That's interesting. I mean, you know, you're really good at drawing already. So if you are struggling with 20 lines, maybe it's something you can work on to find these bigger curves that connect and push through more, push through different areas. This one has worked really well. Cool. That's awesome, Daniel. Yu Chen, 20 lines. Nailed it. I haven't done any in 20 lines. So you guys are doing way better than me. Am I left-handed? Yes. Well, for drawing, but for throwing a ball, I'm right-handed. Straight line was bad for me. Hardest pose. Yeah, this is the hardest pose till now. That was really fun. Awesome. Torso too long. Oh, yeah. That could easily happen with this one, I think. I wonder if I got mine a bit long, too. I think my drawings are getting worse. Yeah, <laughs> that happens all the time. I think if you look back on them, maybe tomorrow... A lot more than 20. That's, that doesn't matter. That's totally fine, Thomas. It's more about trying to do it. They're lovely photos till I get my pencil on there and then they suddenly become deformed. Yeah, I know all about that, Kamal. That happens all the time. That's our brain scrambling things for us. But you can work to undo that, you know. It just takes a bit of time and you start to undo all those things. 
And then what happens is your brain actually starts to help you after a while, which is cool. And S counts as a line, yes. 24, Ira, that's really good. I'm a lefty too, cool. I love the energy of the first pose. Yeah, the first pose was great, eh? I found that one really nice and this one hard, but actually this one turned out to be cool as well. Finally getting the 20 line drawing concept. Brilliant, Kathleen, that was quick because we only just did a few of them. This is great. Okay, well, you know what? It's four o'clock, but I feel like doing another pose. If you guys are up for it, and I have another pose which is quite cool, I think. Although maybe a bit tr oops, might be a bit tricky. Um, should we try one more? Not working. Can we play this video again after the session? I think so. I think so. I'll find that out after the session. <laughs> Hope you do this often. Yeah, I want to do this often. This is really fun. I was surprised how well I drew the gymnast. Yeah, that's really cool. Gymnast was tough too, really tough. So, has that pose come up yet for you guys? I've got a sumo wrestler in mind. Because, you know what? We're drawing all these different athletes, and those guys are crazy athletes. Um, I have no idea how we're going to do this in like straight lines and everything because he looks real like round but I'm sure we can. His head looks very angular. Um, but you know what one thing about sumo wrestlers is they are super muscly. Uh, like you can see his arm there and you know people think they're just fat but look at that guy's arm. Like if he lost uh, well, if, if you took the fat off him, you'd just be this total bodybuilder, I think. Okay, anyway, that is beside the point. Although, well, no, actually, I think it is relevant because you can definitely see a lot of musculature in his arms. Okay, so let's go for it with just like a quick sketch. Um, quite a... Man, and some of these poses I've picked is like totally foreshortened torso. So we're going to have to think about like... How much of his head can we see above the shape of his torso? And how much is inside that shape of the torso? You know, most of it is with, within that shape of the torso, right? So here's his incredibly strong looking arm. So I was, I used to um, live in Japan for a while and Sometimes you would see a couple of sumo wrestlers walking down the street, you know, just going about their daily life. And they'd wear, is it a yukata? It's like kind of like a, sort of like a kimono or a less elaborate kimono type clothing. And just obviously larger than life, you know. Um, and it was really impress. it was always really cool. Like really impressive to see um, quite an, an amazing interesting world as well the sumo world if you ever go to Japan I think going to a sumo wrestling match is like it's gonna be really entertaining for sure like they put on a pretty good show Um, and these guys can do the splits, which is pretty impressive. Okay. So, I'm thinking, I think I've pushed his shoulder across too far this way. Um... But you know what? It's too late. It doesn't matter. It's 
just a quick sketch after all. I'm gonna put in some. See if I can. I wonder if we can like merge the shadow shapes quite a bit into one big shape and see what happens. Not sure that's really worked out, but it doesn't matter. It's all practice. Quite a fun one to draw. I'm going to go for a straight line attempt. Doris has said, this was lovely to come home to, but I had to stop and eat some cake. Yeah, you've got to prior priorities. Cake comes first. Is Japan a good place to live? Yeah, I mean, I haven't lived there long term, um, so I don't know about long term, but I think it's a good place to live, definitely, you know, for the short term. I, I've heard that once you start working, uh, it, it, it can get quite hard. Okay, straight lines, I mustn't forget I'm using straight lines. Because it's quite a, you know, tough, um, you know, people work very hard. So, or at least put in a lot of hours and not much holiday and stuff. But for a visit uh, and for a short, you know, short stay, it's am amazing because it's so different. Okay, straight lines. It's actually... Easier, I think, to turn into straight lines than I thought it might be. Straight line across the front of the foot. Might have used some curves, possibly. Is that the whole pose? Missing anything? And maybe we'll try some of these thick straight lines. Oh, I haven't sharpened that very well. It's supposed to have like a tapered point rather than just being straight on the sides. Oops, I haven't brushed off the dust off it either. Oh well. <laughs> Let's go for a 12 line version. Drawing face assertion, yeah, we can do that too. When do you start with a head and when do you start somewhere else? You know, I feel like there aren't really any rules for that kind of thing. And you can start wherever you like. But try and start with something big rather than a little detail. So especially if you just throw down a ball for the head and maybe an egg for the rib cage and a box for the pelvis or something like that, that's going to be a great starting point because you're starting with the big three masses of the figure. Okay, so that was the straight line one. So now I'm going to go for a 20 line attempt. more than an S, isn't it? Anyway. Okay. I feel like the head just... It's gonna need a few... few lines, because... It's a really nice kind of boxy shape head. Okay, we're getting there. I 
Oh, I'm going to need to use quite a few for that hand. I want to get one in one of these in 20 lines at least, since that's the whole point of the exercise. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, tw wow, 20, 20, okay. Okay, that one wasn't, that wasn't it. Next time I'll get one in 20. Oh wow, you did it in 20, Doris, well done. Okay, I'm gonna just, Quickly. I think next time one thing we could do is maybe have a hashtag or an Instagram or something and also I'll try and have my computer sh or something showing the community area so I can see your guys' drawings. Oh cool, yeah, some some of you guys have posted there. Wow, really cool. Oh wow. Nice one. Got Garen, Einar, Mark. Um, later on you guys, you can put your drawings on the community area. My pencil likes 30. Yeah, I think mine does too. 31. Maybe this, this particular guy just needed a few more lines. My 20 Superman doesn't have a face and his head is a triangle. Well, that's good. I think his head is quite triangular from this point of view, isn't it? This is my favourite pose. Yeah, this is a cool pose. There's so much, like, power there. It's very cool. I like mine a lot. Brilliant. Good challenge. All right, guys. So I think we might call it a day there. Just gone just over an hour. I wonder if you guys in the chat could just let me know what you thought about this uh, live. You know, did you enjoy it? I really enjoyed it. I'm sure I could improve, you know, how I do it. Um, I'm going to look back at some of these. I feel like, yeah, this, and you know, let me know what you thought about having these different exercises and stuff. Like having a 20 line and having a straight line and that kind of thing. How to use your iPad for life drawing. Yeah, I can. I mean, I, I need to figure that out a little bit more myself before I make one like that, but I definitely will. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Kathleen. That was cool. I might not put it up on the channel, but I might put it on the community area or something. If I can, if I can like download it and upload it to there, then I might put it there. Oh, cool. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it. So we should do it again then. Didn't have time to watch you, but enjoyed you talking. That's great, because that means you were looking at the reference, right? Hopefully. Yeah, so if you want to post your drawings, you can go to lovelifedrawing.com and click on community, and then you can log in. And there's a Love Life Drawing community, and you can post them there. And if you go there and post something, make sure you say something to other people who have posted drawings, because then everyone gets a, a comment, which is quite cool. Oh, thanks, Diane. Hey, Marianne, if, it, if you're a beginner and it took you all the time to sketch one, that's totally fine. Just do the one then. Yeah, this was really fun. Like, 
good way to make use of the lockdown. And it's cool that, you know, we're all in different parts of the world anyway, so. Hey, Joseph. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad that it was useful. 23, I can't do less. Well, you know what, Georgia? I couldn't do less either. <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, brilliant. Talk and draw at the same time. Yeah, Jack, I've, done, I've never really done that before. It was quite tricky, tricky to concentrate on the drawing and stuff, but really fun. Oh, brilliant. So you guys were all right with just having these kinds of um, poses, like clothed poses that I find online. One idea I have is, you know, I'm thinking like life models here in London are probably struggling a little bit now because there's no life drawing sessions. So I thought maybe we could hire them for an hour or two if they have a good setup at home. Um, and then they could pose for us and we could draw them that way. And I don't know technically in terms of technology if I can then stream my own drawing or if I, but then if it was like a live model, maybe that wouldn't be as important anyway. We could all just be doing our own drawing and you don't need to see me doing a drawing. What do you think? Um, maybe I can do that. Stream, anyway. How about dancers? Yeah. See you, Lucky Pierre. Thanks, Raj. Yeah, normally life drawing's pretty quiet, eh? Yeah, it would be cool for live models, Gary, if I can figure it out. Thanks, Angie. Hurdling models, yeah, I know. <laughs> Tr Twitch channel. I don't know anything about Twitch, but I'm happy to have an open mind about these things. I just imagine kids playing Fortnite. Okay, happy with photos, okay. So you guys were cool with it just as it was, and then if if I can find a model, we can do. There's a meetup live class in Manchester, which is live streaming weekly, six times a session. Okay. Yeah, if they record the session, I could play it on my screen. That's a good idea. Could try that. That's a quite a cool idea. All right, guys, I think I'm going to end the stream. Thank you guys so much for taking part. And um, here comes my daughter. Hiya. You want to say hi to everyone? You want to say hi? Dad talking to his friends. You got some oranges. Oh, wow. Thank you. Can I have one? <laughs> All right, guys, I think... <laughs> I think I'm going to have to end it. How do you end this thing? Alright guys, take care and I'll see you next time. We'll do another one next week.